بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Um, it's an honor for me to present um, a talk with my professors and thanks for Dr. Professor Dr. Ahmed for this invitation. Um, I'm going to talk about the surgical anatomy of the orbit. Uh, the orbital volume is about 30 uh, cc, and um, the widest part is about 1.5 to 1 centimeter from the orbital ring, and the depth is about 40 to 45 millimeters, and this differs with age and sex. Uh, the globe is about 7 cc, and it's about one-fifth of the uh, uh, volume of the orbit. And the Two walls, uh, the two lateral walls are doing an angle of 90 degrees and the medial walls are parallel to each other and about 22 millimeters um, uh, in width between each other. And the door for the orbit is the eyelid. So to approach the orbit, you have to know the uh, anatomy of the eyelid very well. Um, the uh, orbicularis and the orbital septum and the elevator and the tarsus. Um, the anatomy of the upper lid um, differs from the anatomy of the lower lid. Uh, the, in the upper lid, the elevator um, uh, is attached to the lower part of the anterior surface of the tarsus, and the orbital septum is not attached to the tarsus, it's attached to the elevator. And in the lower lid, um, the lower lid the retractors and the orbital septum is attached to the lower border of the uh, tarsus. And this uh, makes little difference uh, in both eyelids. And the orbital septum in the area of the lacrimal uh, sac is deficient. Uh, it's only uh, covered by the uh, medial palpebral ligament. And you have to take care in the superior lateral part of the lacrimal gland and the medial part is the uh, lacrimal sac. Um, uh, the orbit is bony in structure and having a very important uh, contents like the eyeball and optic nerve, the exocrine muscles, the vessels and nerves, and the ciliary ganglion, which is very important because sometimes it has a clinical uh, impact on the patient. After doing orbital surgery, you find the patient having dilated uh, pupil Sometimes it's related to injury to the ciliary ganglion. And the lacrimal gland, of course, is um, uh, on the superior lateral edge, and the elevator is uh, uh, separating it into uh, lower palpebral and uh, upper or large uh, part, which is the orbital part. And there's fat uh, encroaching all these structures. Uh, the bony orbit is formed of seven bones. The main Three bones are the frontal and the maxillary and the uh, zygomatic, uh, together with the lacrimal bone, which is very small, but it has very important uh, uh, site for the uh, doing DCR or doing any uh, anything the medial wall of the orbit, and the uh, ethmoid bone, and the body of the sphenoid with the lesser ring and the greater ring of the sphenoid, and this superior orbital fissure, which is very important um, as having uh, very important structures passing through it. And the, uh, uh, the, the floor of the orbit mainly from the uh, maxillary bone and the uh, palatine bone. Uh, the orbit is like a pyramid. The apex is in the optic canal, which is in, uh, inside the uh, sphenoid bone. And uh, there are four walls the medial, superior, and lateral, and inferior. The most important thing in the medial wall is that the uh, lamina papyracea, which is a very thin bone, it's damaged during the sinus surgery, and it, uh, it's related to the, um, the, the, the posterior end of it is related to the optic canal, so it's very important when we are doing um, orbital decompression, we, are, we, we have to uh, remove all this medial wall. And during the uh, infections, sometimes the infections is transmitted from the sciences to the orbit through this very thin wall. 
the floor has very important structure, which is the uh, origin of the um, uh, inferior peak muscle and the uh, inferior orbital groove and having the inferior orbital nerve inside. This is very important during the orbital decompression as well. And the lateral wall, um, we're doing that now uh, lateral uh, decompression very frequently. So it's formed of the zygomatic wall and part of the greater window sphenoid. And the roof has the roof has very important uh, uh, landmarks as the trochlea for the superior peak muscle and the lacrimal uh, gland in the superior lateral aspect. And the relation with the sinuses and the brain, the brain is above the orbit and the sinuses is encroaching in the medial side and the inferior side of the and the inferior side of the orbits. And the very important structure is the, uh, infer the inferior orbital nerve passing through the inferior orbital canal. And in um, injuries of the orbit, if we find that inferior orbital anesthesia at this uh, cheek area, uh, it indicates that there is fracture here damaging this nerve. And this is the uh, cranial cavity. We, we are related to the middle uh, cranial fossa. And this, the anterior cranial fossa is related to the superior or the roof of the orbit. And the foramina, uh, here is the um, optic canal and the superior optic uh, fissure and the foramen ovale and foramen rotundum. This is the superior orbital fissure, uh, causing very important structures to the orbit. And the other important foramen is the uh, optic nerve and the uh, anterior and posterior smoidal foramina and the inferior orbital fissure. And uh, here is the uh, superior orbital fissure causing the uh, ophthalmic branch with each three branches the lacrimal and frontal and ciliary, and this is the third nerve and fourth nerve coming as well in the superior orbital fissure. And here is the um, uh, maxillary nerve which is passing through the former rotunda, and this is the mandibular nerve. This is the optic nerve passing through the optic canal. And these are the structures passing through the superior orbital fissure. And we can uh, memorize them by this uh, phrase, live free to see no insult of all sorts. Uh, here's the lacrimal frontal and uh, trochlear nerve in the upper part. And the middle part through the tendinous ring, uh, having the um, superior division of oculomotor and inferior division of oculomotor and nasociliary nerves with the abducent and superior ophthalmic vein. And the inferior orbital fissure as well is uh, having this very important structures. So we have to keep in mind uh, these structures in any case of trauma or any injuries to the nerves. Uh, here's the structures on the skull. It's the tendinous ring and the uh, uh, the nerves and the uh, superior orbital vein can be inside the ring or outside. And the ophthalmic artery as well and its branches very important during uh, any uh, orbital surgery or any uh, injuries to the orbit. And the uh, orbital veins, the uh, superior ophthalmic vein uh, getting the superior and um, the, uh, the central retinal vein and the inferior ophthalmic vein getting the vortex veins as well. And they drain all of these veins to the cavernous sinus which is uh, related to the apex of the orbit. And there are very important structures uh, in the wall of the cavernous uh, sinus together with the internal carotid artery and the abducent nerve in the uh, lumen of the sinus itself. 
and this silence is drained through, through the uh, internal jugular uh, vein. So uh, this was a very uh, brief um, um, talk about the um, anatomy of the orbit. And there are some, uh, I'm going to go very uh, quickly about the approaches of the orbit or how to uh, go inside the orbit, which is called the orbitotomies. Uh, the most famous um, incision is the subciliary, which is uh, under the uh, lashes and extended, you can do uh, lateral tonsotomy and cancerosis with it, or the transconjunctival incision, or we can do a medial uh, transconjunctival incision or lateral, and the um, superior lead crease incision with extension laterally as well, and the sub row incision. The transconjunctival incisions uh, is very important because it's very cosmetic and uh, it gives us very uh, good approach to the most of the lower uh, flo uh, the floor of the orbit or the lower wall of the orbit and we can extend it through uh, lateral tensotomy and tensorysis. Uh, this is very important uh, because if you want to go to the bones of the orbit you have uh, not to open the uh, orbital septum uh, to um, avoid having the fat in your incision. So you just go just beneath the tarsus and then dissect under the orbitalis and then you can go to the uh, bones. If there is anything intraorbital, uh, you have to go in the fornix, which is retroceptal incision and this um, is very difficult, it needs more experience, and uh, it's uh, not very easy to get the bone from this incision, but the other one is easier to get the bone, the periosteum, and then you can manage any uh, orbital injuries in the bone. Uh, this is the retroceptor incision, how to do it. And The preceptor incision which is more important because it gives us uh, access to the bone directly without having this uh, orbital fat in our uh, way. You just go under, uh, just beneath the uh, uh, tarsus and you dissect with periosteal uh, elevate, uh, elevation and then this is the area that uh, gives us the access through the transconjunctival uh, incisions. So it's mostly most of the medial and floor and lateral wall can be approached through this incision with lateral tonsotomy and tensorysis. Um, the other one is the transcutaneous incision. Uh, the best one of them is the subciliary with extension laterally with the um, skin tension uh, lines. And the same, it's uh, if you want the bone, so don't open the orbital septum and just go beneath the orbicularis without opening the septum and go to the uh, bone directly. And this is the area that we can approach through this um, uh, incision. And during this orbitotomy, you have to do a traction suture, which can be done through the gray line. And then you leave the suture a little bit loose, uh, just to make sure that every now and then to open the eye, as this photo, you can close the, uh, the lids and protect the cornea. And as well, you can open the eye if you want to check the pupil at any time of the orbital surgery. And during this incision, you have to uh, keep the lashes uh, away from your way. 
And I think the uh, for the players under the players don't open the center till you find the uh, periosteum and dissect till you find the bone. And then this is the closure. And this is the clinical view after opening the uh, this is the subsidiary incision and opening the to approach the uh, floor in uh, blowout fractures. <coughs> and thank you very much. Thank you.